So my last video comparing the RTX A series or workstation GPUs against the RTX 3000 series GPUs went so well, today I thought we would compare the RTX 5000 against the RTX 3080. Hi everyone, I'm Mike from the Media Man Studio Services and on our channel we like to bridge that gap between the creative content and the technical requirements. Today's technical requirement is, let's see how these mid-range workstation GPUs compare to a mid-range gaming GPU. But before I get to that, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I've currently got 100,000 views on my channel, so thanks everybody that's watching. And I got 1.9 thousand subscribers, so that means only about 2% of the people are actually hitting the like button and subscribing. So stop right now, reach down there and hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe and help the channel grow. So to start off with, I'm not hating on workstation GPUs. I firmly believe that the Quadro cards and the A-series graphic cards have a very strong place in the creative industry. Take for instance the RTX 4000. This in my opinion is the best GPU for the average animator. With the 16 gigabytes of VRAM, this card is a great for caching animation workflow. Programs like Maya and Blender don't require a lot of GPU processing power for most animation workloads. So in studio environments where animators are just producing animations, they really need this extra VRAM for caching to the GPU. Virtual production is another industry that can benefit from some of the options only available on workstation GPUs. Take for instance if you're trying to drive a multi-panel LCD wall and you're using a synced camera. You need the NVIDIA sync option that only comes with the Quadros or the A5000 and 6000 GPUs. So my last video on gaming GPUs versus workstation GPUs was very popular and I got about 18,000 views. This video also generated some really good comments, but I also got some of the same arguments. If you want to create professional content, you need to have professional equipment. Or one of my favorite arguments was, um, you cannot get NVIDIA support if you buy a gaming card. And yes, I agree that having a, a gaming card, it's harder to get support, but let's talk about the support a little bit. So I'm sure NVIDIA and its supporting partners supply some great support when you purchase a workstation GPU. But in 25 years in the industry, I've never used NVIDIA support or even used the support provided by some of the resellers for a GPU other than if there's a hardware failure. Now I'm not saying that NVIDIA support is not needed. What I'm saying is that for most productions in progress, all of the software drivers are thoroughly tested and proven before they go into production. Most studios would never experiment with unproven driver, hardware, and software configurations in the middle of a production. In fact, most studios do not upgrade their NVIDIA drivers unless they really need to. And to transition an artist over to a new driver mid-production is very rare. And when they do investigate new software packages and, and driver combinations, they run it through a lot of tests before they would ever release it into the production environment. And because NVIDIA is now releasing studio drivers at the same time for both workstation GPUs and gaming GPUs, these issues will be resolved for both types of GPUs. And as I clearly stated in my last video on gaming versus workstations, some workloads require workstation GPUs. They may need the increased VRAM that's offered in a workstation GPU, or they may be doing some complex calculations and need the ECC or error correcting memory. So it's not about liking one class of GPU over the other. It's about choosing the best GPU for your requirements and budget limitations. Studios and independent artists need to make smart financial decisions for long-term stability. So being able to choose between workstation class GPUs and gaming GPUs and being able to manage your budgets is a great option in today's market. Both of these GPUs are classified as mid-range GPUs in the workstation market as well as gaming market. The RTX A5000 has an MSRP of $2,250 and an RTX 3080 has an MSRP of $699. So yes, I know the market's a bit of a mess right now, so MSRP really means nothing. So, but even if you look at street value of an RTX 3080, it is coming in cheaper at about $1,300 to $1,500 US right now. So let's compare the specs first of these two GPUs. So both the 3080 and the A5000 use the same processor, the GA102 die, but on the 3080 we have 8,704 CUDA cores, and on the A5000, we have 8,192. For tensor cores, it's 272 versus 256. For RT cores, we have 86 versus 64. And on the base clock speed, it's 1,440 megahertz for the 3080 and 1,170 megahertz for the A5000. Boost clock speed is 1,710 megahertz versus 1,695. So here's where one of the major differences are between these two cards. For RAM, we have 10 gigabytes of GDDR6X for the RTX 3080. And on the A5000, we have 24 gigabytes of GDDR6, but it's ECC memory. 
The memory bus on the 3080 is 320 bits and the memory bus on the A5000 is 384 bits. So the RTX 3080 uses 320 watts for power. The A5000 only uses 230. That's quite a reduction in power for this card. All right, so let's get on to benchmarking these cards. I've already done all the benchmarks for the RTX 3080, and I currently have the RTX A5000 installed into the workstation. So here we have the standard BMW scene I've just downloaded off the internet. And let's come up here and click render. So I've downloaded a lot of scenes off the internet for this testing, and I'll leave links in the comments section down below. And then if you wanted to run these tests on your GPUs at home, you know, feel free. And please post in the comments section what your results were. So that render is completed and rendered in about uh, 22.88 seconds. And on the RTX 3080, it rendered the same scene out in 23.74 seconds. So we had almost a full second savings with the RTX A5000. So here we have the junkyard scene, another very standard benchmark from Blender. And we'll render that out and we'll see how long that takes. So this scene's finished rendering and it rendered in about 32.92 seconds. And on the RTX 3080, it rendered in 34.02. So still about a second reduction with the RTX A5000. So in another really standard benchmark scene from Blender we have is the classroom scene. So we're just going to hit render on that one and see how long it takes. So while this scene's actually rendering out, we can come over and look at our hardware monitor and see what the utilization is of our GPU. So if we scroll down here to the GPU, we can see that it's using 100% utilization on that. It's using 16% of the memory buffer and almost none of the uh, actual bus itself but we are getting a full utilization. And the GPU power, uh, that's one of the things I don't like about this hardware monitor, it actually just gives you a percentage. There are other tools out there that will actually tell you how much wattage is being used. So the classroom render is done rendering, and it rendered it in one minute and 10 seconds. And interesting enough, the RTX 3080 rendered in the exact same time of one minute and 10 seconds. So we'll call that one a pretty clear even tie. So another really good test to be using for GPU rendering is the Octane benchmark. And I ran both of these GPUs using the RTX on or enabled RTX. And the results we had for that was the RTX 3080 gave a score of 561.76. And on the A5000 is 569.77. So it's a very close comparison between the two, but the A5000 has still beat out the RTX 3080 in this test. So another really good test to get is the V-Ray benchmark test. You can download this free on the Chaos website. Uh, you can do three different types of tests. The first one is V-Ray for your CPU. Uh, the second one is the GPU with CUDA, and the third test is the GPU with RTX. So when the results we got for that was with the 3080, we got a score of 1405 for the CUDA test, and on the A5000, we got 1433. And for the V-Ray RTX test, we had the 3080 at 2337, and the A5000 at 2416. So, so far, the A5000 has been pulling forward in almost every test we've done. And another great GPU rendering test to do is the Redshift Benchmark. You can download this from the Maxon site for free. Uh, it's a command line tool, so there's no interaction to the test itself. But once it's done, it just gives you an image. And down here at the bottom, it just shows you the time it took to render out the picture itself. So for the RTX 3080, we had 3 minutes and 22 seconds. And for the A5000, we had 3 minutes and 5 seconds. So again, the RTX A5000 has been doing really well in all of these tests, and I'm quite surprised. So in the last test that we're going to do today is I'm actually going to run Maya and I'm going to run this attic scene that I've downloaded. And you can also get this off the internet. I'll put a link in the comment section below. And it's a bit of a longer render. It takes about uh, 8 to 10 to 12 minutes depending on your GPU. And it's really going to use a lot of the resources that the GPU has to offer. So this render is complete and it took 11 minutes and 9 seconds on the A5000. And on the RTX 3080 it took 13 minutes and 45 seconds. So again, quite an improvement with the A5000 over the RTX 3080. So this reduction in rendering might have something to do with the 24 gigs of VRAM that's in the A5000. Remember the RTX 3080 only has 10 gigabytes of VRAM. So, so far we've been showing you some benchmarking of the GPU rendering. There's another really good test for testing the viewport performance for your GPUs. And it actually tests your entire system and that's SpecView Perf. So I'll leave a link in the comment section below for anybody who wants to try this out. Now this is a great test. It doesn't test just your GPU, it tests your CPU, you know, your RAM, your memory bus, quite a few other things. But because I did the same tests of both GPUs and the same system, it is pretty much a head-to-head -head test between the two. So I'll give you a little preview of what it looks like when it's running. It just does a lot of viewport, you know, interaction. It's an animated camera and, and it's going to go through some different scenes and some different types of scenes. It takes quite a long time to render this out or complete this benchmark test. So I'll just get straight to what the results were. 
On the RTX 3080 for the 3D Max, we had 119.22, but on the A5000, we had quite an improvement with 159.60. In Maya, the scores were a little closer with 412.97 for the 3080 and 425.79 for the A5000. So for SpecView Perf, you can actually go to their website and also compare some of the other systems and GPUs. So it's not just a GPU test, it's a full system test, and it's a great tool to be testing your system with. So that's going to complete all the testing we've done for today. I'm actually pleasantly surprised at the amount of performance that we got out of the A5000 versus the RTX 3080. Now, we didn't see as much of an uplift when we were looking at the 3090 versus the A6000. They were pretty comparable, and the only really big difference was the VRAM. And that mattered a lot when you're doing large complex rendering. But for most day-to-day -day usage and rendering with the A5000, it really you know, kind of beat the pants off the RTX 3080 here. It won in every single test except one which it tied. So again, I highly recommend using the A5000 workstation graphic card. It does come at an extra cost, but that extra cost does give you the extra you know, VRAM. You're getting uh, 14 more gigabytes of VRAM in this card than you are over the RTX 3080. So that brings us to the question of the day. If you were going to choose a, a GPU and you had a choice between an RTX 3080 and A5000, what GPU would you choose? Just leave your comments in the section below. So that'll wrap it up for this video, but don't forget to watch the other videos that are on my channel, hit that like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit notifications. And visit the Discord chat server. There is a link in the comments section below. I really enjoyed doing this video for you, and I'll see you in the next one.